Hi everyone. So, I managed to escape South America. I traveled with a bus to Santiago, then flew with a plane to Brazil, Sao Paulo, from Sao Paulo to Madrid in Spain, then from Madrid in Spain I flew to Paris in France, and yeah, in France I missed my plane, or rather I found out later that I booked it a month in advance, so yeah, that was an error on me, but then I took a plane to Frankfurt in Germany, flew from Frankfurt to Vienna, and from Vienna I was able to take a bus after I stayed in a nice hotel for one night. And yeah, with the bus I flew to, drove to Zagreb, then I stayed a month in Croatia, which was very nice, and after Croatia I took a bus again to France to meet a friend of mine, and with her I stayed a month in uh, Marcon. Marcon is like halfway between Dijon and Orléans and I stayed there for a month for co-working and then we drove to uh, southern west France next to uh, what is it Spain uh, south of the Bordeaux region and then we stayed another two, two weeks and after that, then if you count, then it's the middle of uh, September. In the middle of September, I took a plane and flew to Germany to stay with my dad and my brother in my dad's house. And in the, there, I stayed for almost four months, more or less. September, October, November, December. Yeah, January, more than four months. And uh, then end of January the 29th I flew to Morocco and all during the pandemic and yeah it worked all out and the most problems I made myself but with planning and sufficient preparation it worked all out so what was like the most difficulty was when flying to Europe in the first place was to find out what kind of flights are actually going what uh, what kind of options I have to fly. I was happy I got like a flight that was only 500 euro, 5 to 600 euro, and that was for a transatlantic flight basically. And normally I would have paid like a thousand, thousand two hundred. I think the last time I flew from South America to Germany, I paid 1400 euro and yeah so it's quite a difference you can imagine then when i had my little detour over vienna it wasn't so much of a problem it cost like another 120 euro plus 60 euro maybe for the hotel and the bus was 15 euro or something like next to nothing um even with that detour i was still cheaper than with normal flights so that was very good that said, there were also other flights over the Atlantic that were like two, three, five thousand euro. So they were probably just completely booked. But then with this detour, with a little few stops in between, which were not that bad, um, it was all very good and very cheap. So I definitely can recommend if you are traveling that you are getting yourself a carry-on bag so that you don't have too much luggage. Because if you have to wait for your luggage, and have more luggage and the price goes up a lot um, you have to carry a lot and you wouldn't even be able to take the options that I bought so what I bought was I flew I took the flights and to Paris but I didn't take the flight which I would have needed to go to from Paris to Ireland Dublin so I booked the flight from Santiago to Dublin and as it turned out that was cheaper than just flying to Madrid or Paris but since I have only hand luggage I was not uh, in the need to take that flight to Dublin and then continue my trip from there so I was able to just book a flight theoretically from Paris and then continue from there yeah I really really enjoyed my time in uh, Croatia there I had a small apartment so I was able to get a very cheap place on Airbnb for 500 euro a month or something like that, 500 to 600 euro a month. And 
because yeah the situation in Croatia was just very sad at least in Zagreb I think and the coast they made some good business they were able to have a lot of people there but in Zagreb they were the main city it was yeah a little bit a bit empty at least from tourists which is fine for me I get a cheap place to stay and not everything is overrun with tourists so that was great and yeah I had some contact with my host who was very Honorous, uh, gracious man, and like I brought him on the flight, and and I would come a day later, and what what's going on? And he was just saying, hey, just take care that you come to Zagreb, and there will be a surprise waiting for you. And I was like, okay, what kind of surprise? Like, will you make me some dinner, or I don't know, <laughs> will you get like a prostitute for me or something? I have no idea. First time in Croatia, so Eastern Europe, you never know. <laughs> And yeah, when I arrived, um, I was welcomed by one of his uh, organizers, basically they take care of the different houses and he brought me to another place which was also free but which was a lot bigger and had the benefit that it was like in the Souterra, in the basement, so it was nice and, nice and cold in there because it was like obviously summer, high summer and not like under the attic as I originally booked so that was nice for me it was like I got a huge place with their own kitchen washing machine and bathroom and full living room and huge bedroom and it was in the in the basement so it was a, a very great temperature and um, that was very very great because um, the next weeks it was getting like up to 40 degrees or something so that means that I was able to walk through the city enjoy it um, suffer a little bit under the heat enjoy the heat and then come back into my nice place that is at 21 to 23 degrees without any air conditioning needed yes um, there I worked a little bit I planned originally to stay like three months but then I uh, made a deal with one of my people, uh, friends that I was working with, my peeps, and uh, I was meeting with her in an Airbnb in France and we wanted to work on something and just take the one, one and a half months to get things started. So I took a bus ride from Zagreb to Paris and it took like 20 hours, it was a 20 hour bus ride. We drove through Slovenia and then Austria, so I, I was thinking like, okay, to France, you just drive Slovenia, then straight through Italy, and then you are there, but no, that was not what the bus driver planned. He drove through Slovenia, then Austria, um, where we had, basically in Slovenia, we had a small border checkpoint, because it was the EU border, or the Schengen border, and then we continued to Germany, where we had like another big border, and we were checking us and like military police standing there with uh, machine pistols and stuff so that nobody brings in corona or something who knows we weren't we weren't even checked for corona so i have no idea what kind of checkpoint that was supposed to be and then we continued on then we drove through switzerland a little bit that was nice um but then it was already getting dark and then to france where we I don't know the checkpoint in France. No, I think we just got out and then in again and then continued driving. Nothing, nothing big. And yeah, then I arrived in Orléans in the morning. No, in the evening. Yeah, we drove through the night more or less. I have no idea. It was like a little bit in the past. Yeah and then we took a car and we drove to the airbnb and it was pretty nice it was like in the countryside um i was living in the living uh, sleeping in the living room and she had the bedroom and we had a small kitchen and outside we had like a small deck with chairs where you could sit outside and the the host he had like some chickens that were running outside oh, it was very cute and very relaxing very very relaxing place and i definitely learned to appreciate france and there are some really very nice areas you probably need a car or a bike because they don't really have many walking paths and especially in the countryside you can't really expect something like that 
but they have many things to see and what definitely is also great they have very good food so in the supermarket you can get all kinds of good food yes so after that i went to germany stayed with my parents and now i'm in morocco so let's see what i can do here okay have a good one